So Hemshe Chaim Beis, we're in volume 1, we're at the end of Discourse 16, chapter 63 we did, but I didn't do the end of the Mimer, which we're going to do, but I'll make a summary first, and then we'll continue, hopefully, chapter 64. <sighs> to take a deep breathing in, take a journey into outer space, into inner space. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of all the <laughs> the what's we call the things that have the, the con- things we're consumed with and obsessed with all day. Get rid of all the material concerns and enter into another space. I'm trying another way of entering into Ayin Bay's territory. So we are middle of the discussion of you could say the headline is transcendence. Language of Chassidus, or Makif, Seviv, Kesser, and its impact on our existence, on our lives. The Rebbe Rashab addressed the Kesser of Ak, Adam Kadman, which is that one snapshot that sees the whole picture, every detail from the beginning of time to the end of time. Its impact, it's, it's, it, remember, all these spiritual levels exist whether we're aware of them or not. The question is, does it, is it relevant to us in the sense that it impacts us? That's the, the issue here. Conscious impact. And it's gili. So we talked about ak, the different impact that it has, the general bittle that it introduces into existence that's mostly hidden. But it's expressed at least in the highest, the fact that we're alive and we receive something of divine energy. Then he moved into a little more the Shamish Yisrael, the souls, their general bitl of Mr. Snefesh. And um, that uh, hidden love that every soul has, which he called the Munapshuta, simple faith. C- connected it also to Nasiv and Nishma. The bitl that we have, not just to a particular specific desire of God's, but to the general Baal HaRotzen. And then he moved to the next Makif level, which is the Eagle HaGadl, the big sphere that remains after the Tzimtzum, but it's the energy before the Tzimtzum. And its bitl, he said, is the bitl of the body. That's what he spoke about at length. And now, last chapter, 63, he said, okay, that's the two general Makif. Now we have to go into the individual Makifim, which is each world, each section of the cosmic order has its own particular keser or rotsen. And he gave the example of building a house, building a structure. You build a structure. A second. Isn't that the planets? Each individual planet has, has their own rings. Uh, you could say, I mean, it's, it's fine, but, what, what, how, but, but we're talking about the explanation of it. One second. Before I say that, I should sum up one second. So, so in addition to the general desire for the entire structure, which has two levels, Tehir Elah, Tehir Tata, or in other words, Igla HaGadl, or the Ten Hidden Spheres, or Shir Atzmei Bekayach, or Atzil is the Klolos, all the different names for it. And the second one is Ak. In addition to that, each particular section of, of existence has its eagle. It's, it's eagle. You could say it's like a microcosm within the macrocosm. So the macrocosm is one big sphere that's... And then each place is also... It, it duplicates the big picture. So each one has its own focus. So Atzilus has its ten spheres and its eagle, Kesser. And there's the Kesser of Bria and it's here and so on and so forth. And he distinguished, he said, an Ak... An ark, it's really an explanation why. Because an ark, all the details, says an ark are all equalized. And he gave two reasons. One is because the air in all of them, the energy in everything is equal there. That was reason number one. Okay. So even though they are fundamentally distinct, but in Ak, that energy is what dominates and that's what radiates and that, that equalizes them.
And the second reason is because there, any distinct identity of any individual level is completely concealed. And therefore, they don't have any distinction. In the parentheses, it appears that he connected to, he says, because because they don't have any distinct ent- and distinction, and they're all there in a very amorphous way, compares it even to the ten hidden spheres. So Ak has in some ways similarities to what is to the Tiri law before the Tzimtzum. So therefore, I came, but they That's why, because of these two reasons, we need to now have individual will, individual desires, individual ksar and keser for each particular world. And now he gives the example of the binyan. You're building a structure, so you have the general, the general uh, desire for the entire structure. It includes in it the words here are. Every detail is there. Even the, the, the rooms, the, the, the steps, the doors, the windows, the wood, the, tree, the stones, the earth. But it's not nikr. That's the word. It's not obvious. It's not distinct in any individual way. It's only the, what's mostly obvious there is the desire for the whole structure. I'm reading the end of the chapter. Afterwards, when it comes into action, when it comes into the details, there's an individual desire for each room and each step, and basically for every detail, for the stones and so on and so forth. The same thing is above. That the primordial thought in Ak, in Adam Kadman, is the is the machshav is the thought and the desire for worlds in general? Shakulam sham behelam adayin. There they're all still concealed. Vachakachnim shechlotz and plati lechol elam afrat. And afterwards you have an individual desire for each one individually. So I know that this was left. You asking some questions about it. The way I understand it, I mean, I, I, it's always good. Call the poshet milat fei. It's always good to begin with plain pshat before we get into you know deeper stuff. Plain pshat. Using, just an, analyzing the example before we get into the nimshal. In the example, uh, and obviously the key distinction is that when we envision something, God envisions it's a, it's a lot different because we will have flaws in our vision. But let's, for, our, for argument's sake, say you envision every detail of what you want. So I think a few things. In that general desire for a home that you dream, your dream house, as they say, you have a dream house. And, you, and not just a dream house, you want it to be on a beach. You want it to be a certain size. You know, wherever that dream came from. You, look, you, you saw other houses that you I want to replicate. You like this room from this one, this, this. You want to bring stuff from Italy. You know, whatever it is, all the materials you want to bring. In this. So you have that vision. So the first thing is, if, if someone was able to enter that vision, even though the details are there, but number one, they're not there in any distinct way. You know, and you can maybe express yourself well and describe exactly what I want. But that's because you know it. But the vision itself is is very uh, amorphous, and the details are not distinct at all. They're, that's what he calls behelam. In addition, the details don't matter that much. The details are only to fulfill that general desire of the home. So what dominates there is I want a home. The main power of that desire is I want a home. That's the driving force. You get rid of that, and someone will say, listen, are you uh, like you know? Are you married to the marble of this in particular room? You say that's not my main thing. I want a house. If I can't get that marble, I'll get something else. So, well, Dam- so that's, I, I think that may be the way you can explain the two things in Ak. In Ak, there's two things going on. The details are not distinct, as in a defined, tangible way. And number two, what dominates is the air, the energy of the machshava itself, the pure intensity of I want this home. Whereas once you get into the next step, once if you, if you move out of Ak, so to speak, so now you're moving into this. So now there's a particular um, desire, I would say even a particular plan for each particular section of this building. And frankly, the person who's building the kitchen may not even be involved in the one building the dining room. So you could have almost two different teams, each with their own complete plan. So here you go, Atsila, Sambria, Yitzira, each have their own so-called team. Each one have their own kesser. Now, you ask the question, all those, yes, each one, so you have one main manager who has the whole picture in mind, make sure that it's all coordinated. But in the actual process of how this gets done, 
you clearly see the stages here. So the question is, you know, all these details in their original desire, what do they look like? So fine, even if you're able to find every detail there, but you still need in this, at least I'm talking now on a human level, on a physical level, you still need these two stages, at least two stages. You need the general plan, and then you need, okay, now we're, we're going to build one section now. This section has its own called specific plan, which is aligned with a bigger plan. That's how I would explain it. Now, this doesn't take away that Ak sees the whole existence from beginning to the end. But that's why I was saying, there's a, you know, I'll give an example. Rosh Hashanah, we're told, God um, uh, judges us and allocates the Parnassah we'll have for the entire year. So the Chassidus has the question, then why does it say that every day when we daven, we're asking God to allocate there? So there's different answers given. One answer is that you could change it, obviously. You know, but... Another answer is, no, everything was designated Rosh Hashanah. You're asking for every day is that it should be revealed. You know, and it should be, the channel should be opened. Because you could have the general hamshachas there, but it's not been specific. My point is that you can find in many situations in Yiddishkeit where, yes, you have, so to speak, God's attention, but now I need it more, I need your attention today in my details right now. I don't just need, like, you could, God will say, listen, the end is going to be good. In, in Machshavah Gedum the Ak, I have your story, it's going to be a good story. You say, yes, I, yes that's nice, I want my hand to be, I want to be good also today. In other words, you can see a very clear distinction, that if you only worked with Ak, you, you're lacking the so-called, the detail-oriented, and the or more, more specific-oriented. That's why I was mentioning, you know, we, we say that every day, call Yehima over Davidita, Right? You can't do a mitzvah today for yesterday. You can't put on film today to, if you missed yesterday. Put on film twice today. So the Rebbe brings this from Zayhar and so on. Because Why not? There are mitzvahs you could. Mitzvahs that are not connected to time. Fine. So you don't do it now. You do it later. You can do more of it, etc. Because time itself is a is the bitter. It's not just the mitzvah you're doing. It's the, the mitzvah is to revara today, Friday, this day, in this day and time. So you say, one second, what's the difference in this day and time? If I do it any time, Ak, what is, why does Ak really care? Ah, because it's not just Ak. Ak is in a general picture. It's also we need to have the specific details. So that's why, I, that's why even in a perfect world, the Machshavak Duma Da Ak is required because it's like in the, in the organized way, it has everything in there. But then there is, an, there is when you talk real, the structure of existence as we know it, Requires each particular world with all its personality, and there's atzilus and briyitzirah. That's how I would simply explain it. Uh, you know, there, there may be more ways to explain how it all exists in Ak. I mentioned before to you that I think he's going to that there's really two biurim achsidus, and I think we we discussed one. I think later he's going to say another one. What? How do you define the rots and machshavak You know how how uh, amorphous is it? Is it potential? Is it an actual desire? You know. But remember, we're talking here levels that are very, very sublime and very abstract. Because, you know, you can think about it, as I said many times, Asir Ruchnis is also pretty hard to figure out. Forget about, now we're talking about Ak Machshav Ak But we do have examples for it. Because, we know, you know, that God wants a relationship with Him. We want a relationship, God wants to ha- us to have a relationship with Him. So He created us in His image, so we can envision Ak in some way, we have examples for it. That's the key thing. So part of what we're doing is, besides trying to understand that world, is trying to have a relationship with God in all levels. And Ak is an important level to have a relationship with. Okay. So what's beautiful really here is that when now we talk about Amunah, it's not just Amunah Pshut in everyone. It's actually the revelation. Why does everyone have equal Amunah? You know why? Because we're all equal in God's plan. When do we, once you go to Atzillus, there's an Hashem of Atzillus and an Hashem of Bria. There's going to be a distinction between uh, uh, a Tzadik, a Benini, a simple person. In Ak, there's no distinction. And because there's a revelation from Ak in our lives, everyone has equal Amunah Pshuta. You know, based on what he says, Amunah Pshuta, you'd say, is equal to Moshe Rabbeinu, a Rebbe, and a simple person from the level of Ak. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking now that Atzillus has plenty of Milas. But that's, a, that's an example. The distinction, when we say the distinction between souls, that's on the world, level of a world. Let's think from Ak's perspective, Everyone has a certain equal role. And that's why the, the, when that radiates within us, that creates that equal amunah pshuta that everybody has. Just to, and that's even probably higher. Yeah, that's even higher. Um, is that about 
Bechira, Jews, and Shamas Yisrael. I wouldn't go and act with that. That's really an atzmos. It's one of a chart. I wouldn't even go there. It's a whole different discussion. Look, okay. So let's. So let me just. We're gonna. I'll just conclude the mimer now. Chapter sixty-three. Any questions? Trust me, I could. We could talk about this all day and analyze and analyze it. There's more and more to say. I think some things emerge. Honestly, when I'm, when I'm learning, trying to learn this, the general, the general style. You know, when you learn these different styles, you learn Gemara is the same thing. There's Leiun, which you learn one page, and you can spend the hours on it. And then there's Legirse, or the key, you know, where you're learning more just to get here. We're not. I can't call this Legirse at all. I think this is pretty much in depth, relatively speaking. But my focus mainly is to make sure that we understand the Pshat, the flow. That to me is the key. Once you have that, you can build upon that. Like you know, you can always go back. And analyze a chapter much deeper and stuff like that. But I think that the key thing is the flow. So the flow is pretty clear right now, actually. It started with Kesa, went through the Keichas Primim, Eris Primim, internalized the imminent energy, and moved now to the transcendent. So let's finish this Maimar I'm on page 118. One last thing. It's a comment, maybe, but it comes out that it seems it comes out that Ak is the most complex level than Nostalgia's. Uh, Higher than that, we seem to. The word most more, the word most complex is very very complex for me uh, because I mean I find complexity everywhere so let me just tell you that if you're talking about the most elaborate I mean I don't like to use the word most it has its role Ak is a role has a particular role to play the truth is Chassidus you can hear a lot more about Atzilus than Ak. Actually, Atzillus gets much more complicated because Atzillus, you're dealing with already tangible realities. How Eris and Kalim, in Ak, there are no Kalim officially. But there are potential? Potential, are potential. But, no, but Atzillus is where you see, look what happens. You know what happens after Ak? There comes Akudim. Yeah. Ten energies in one container. And then comes chaos. Toyo. The energies in containers are completely misaligned. Yeah. And Tikkun, they all come back together in a peaceful way, harmony. So Ak is a, it's, it's, talking, it's, it's different p- components of the map. Ak is the overall map in within the structure of existence. Tahiri law is its function. It's, it's hard to make comparisons here, what's more complex, not Maybe complex. What you mean is most comprehensive. That's the word I meant, yeah, most, most of the comp- complex. Most comprehensive. But, most complex. Yeah, but remember, it all, it's, it, you could say the same thing about Tahiri law. That, that's the sphere of They also have everything in there, and even a more. Subtle state. Most all inclusive. But they're not even there. It's almost nothing there. Almost doesn't count. It's, it's almost, I it mean, it's. it's, it's I mean, in, in, and Ak is also relatively almost nothing. If you want. I'm not sure what you're. Well, in the essence of Gnosis, we don't say that there's anything there there to uh, just unfold. We just say that it's the vision that there should be. Anyway, I don't make such comparison. Does not speak to me. That's all I can tell you. Each level has its complexity and its mm-hmm. role, and has to be analyzed for what it is. That's all I would say. I wouldn't start. You know, it's not like if you get Ak, you're going to get the whole picture. You need every piece to know. You got to need to get it all. You know. Remember the the point he made much earlier that there are three levels as the energies evolve. There's how they stand in the esosphere psychosis, which means as they stand in the vision of the divine vision, and then they're amorphous, not tangible, not con- you know, there's no substance. Then there's the second level as they come into the Kav after the Tzimtzum. And then there's the third, how they manifest in the containers, not Silas. Ak wasn't even mentioned there. But that's a general. Ak is the first step after the Tzimtzum. Let's put it this way. Once the divine creator, the cosmic engineer, made the commitment to create, he put it all into one big blueprint. That's Ak. That's Ak. I mean, I explained it in different ways. That's what it is. So however you understand that. I mean, but it's one level. Then they come to other levels. If you look in Eitz Chaim, you'll see there's a Shar Ak, there's a Shar Akudim, Shar Nukudim. Every one of them is a whole... Uh, the, the whole it's, like, it's like studying uh, uh, physics. You can't say one thing is... There's not one thing that opens everything up. Everything is part of everything. I mean, they're general principles. It could be different arcs, different universes. 
That no, that I would not say. In, 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 there's only one ak. Just like, this, just like within Ak, there's different... different uh, yeah, but Chassidus and Chabal does not say that. Silus, the four worlds, are the only thing that we talk about macrocosm, macrocosm. Ak is really Adam de Bria, if you really want to use it. It's, it's, uh, so it's Bria de Klolos. And then there's Bria de Protis. But you don't say there's an Ak de Klolos and an Ak de Protis. That you don't say. Just for the record. There's one Ak and that's it. I mean, of course, there's Iskalos and everything, so in every place you can find the Ak within it, but it's not usually the language that's used. You use more Atzilus Bri Yitzir Asiya. So Atzilus here is Atzilus the Klolos is like the Malchus, the Ainsof, the, the Sviras before the Tzimtzum, the hidden. Bri the Klolos is Bri. The Mimer Bolog that I kept telling you guys to learn, Drush Gimel Mine Odom, that's where he lays out that map. So look, let's learn this chapter 118. This is the end of the discourse, which as we've seen, in previous discourses, my marim, that these ends happen to illuminate very fascinating details in the whole picture. Because he applies it now to a posik. According to the above, we'll understand what it says that when you will come into this land that Hashem, God, gave you, the questions he asked were several contradictions. Did God give it to us, or are we coming? Is it our effort, or is it Something from above, a matana mumayla. Huh? That was another expression. Yeah, there was a few ways he asked this question. Yeah, irusha matana, inheritance or gift. Vihine eretz uloshen rotsen. Here we go. Keser. Eretz, when you say eretz, is loshen rotsen. Kamayim razal, loma nikra shmo eretz. Like the Medr says, why is she called land eretz? Why is the name Eretz in Hebrew? Because she runs to perform, to fulfill the desire of her. I always understood it as run and both. Merutza, it's really both. Shiratsasa. It's a good question. I, I've always interp- I always interpret, when I read it, I always interpret both. That the running is because you want to do it. So it's like uh, earlier he said that Rotsin is Melosh and Merutza, Rotse, it's connected, Ritza, they're all connected. Okay. Shirotza Solasis at Saint Kaim. It could say desires to fulfill the desire of her nest. It's one of the ways God is called his nest, Kaina. Like a uh, Shamash is Kaini. How could it be a choir or something? Like Kona, or somebody who acquires. No, no, Kaina here is lush in the cave of, of, of Kaina. Yeah, the nest. It means the nest. Like Khan. The Khan is the nest. What? Kaina? I need, 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 I to serve my acquire. Serve my nest is the way you'll find all the Trump interpretations. I looked it up. Have to acquire everything. Khan. It says Khan Shali, my nest, my home. It's true, he's also acquire, but the words, the translation is is, is is Khan is, is, is definitely... To somebody to take, get no, 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 it's correct. Khan is also an acquire. I agree, I'm not saying, but I'm saying all the interpretations in L'Shamash is Khan Shali in Tanya. Chapter 10. Khan Delay. Khan Delay. Khan as a nest. He's my nest. He's my home, basically. Right. But it all, but I think here is also the same. When you say, let's say, Anin of Reisel is Shamish is Kaini, I think they translate that as nest as well. It, it, maybe it also means, look, in Chassidus, they talk Kaina, Khan, they also yeah, connect yeah. Khan to Kaina. They, they generally create an English. Like honestly, like, honestly, I mean, that, we're talking about, the, you're talking about the literal interpretation of the Medrash. Yes. I know that many places where it says Khan, I've looked it up. Is definitely nest. There's no question about it. But are there exceptions? Maybe. I I, I was going to interpret this as nest. I mean, bottom line, it's God. However, you interpret it. Fill the will uh, of my, my nest. My car. My nest. My nest has. Look nest. in Tanya chapter ten. My nest has a, and a will. Your a bird's nest has a will. It's not a bird's nest. God is our nest. It means our source, our home. Our home. 
It's called God is. Called, it's an expression. This for sure. Is, I told you this. Generally, generally it translates whether properly or not in English. I was created. I was. I was created. Wait, wait, my look in Tanya. Creator. In Tanya chapter ten interprets it as nest. Same kene. For sure, that's the interpretation there. So with the, the, question the question is whether nest and kaina and choir have a connection, right. or they're two different interpretations. It's not that. That's all. In English, it generally translates something that doesn't seem proper because it always stress that I was created to serve my creator, which is. Boyer, boyer, boyer. Yeah, I'm, I, as I said, I'm almost sure that in in the Tzemach Tzedek and places of Chizus they discusses kaina as khan and kaina connects the two. If I recall correctly, there's yes, a connection. The yeah. Why you use that word? Remember, the key thing is why you're using that yes, word of all right. words. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, who cares whether it's an acquirer or a nest? Why are you using that word? Like I said, in Tanya, for sure, nest. In some other places, nest. Generally speaking, I, when I've looked up the translations, nest was usually the word for khan or kaine. I think we even learned it earlier. I'm a That's a memorial in Kedushan, the end of Kedushan. Yeah, mi- 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 it is a Mishnah. Last Mishnah in Kedushan. Last chapter in Kedushan. Yeah. And the Gemara. Yeah. So, okay, that's kind of. See, this, is, this reserves to be d- discussed online. Someone puts up an interpretation. Someone says, no, it's this. And then we look for sources. There's Kurkandansias for these things. There's Radak, there's Sefer Ashroshim. There are books that talk about all these meanings. Oruch. In other words, if you want to know how to d- determine this, I would go open up an Aruch, I would open up a Sefer Ashrashim, I'd, I'd go to Tzamech Tzedek in different places, Kainah Khan. We had actually a Meshachasidim Kainah earlier in Ayin Beis. Now I don't remember exactly where. Wait, well, it says Meshachasidim Kainah, that's exactly it, it says Kam Kandalei. Yeah, right. Okay, the question how it applies to the other places. I always, I, I connect it anyway. Bottom line is what he wants to understand it then according to what you're saying that I was created to, to run to do the will of my nest what do you what, so what do you mean by that what, 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 what's the nest there the same question applies if you would say acquirer but you need well, explanation either the acquirer is at the so, the so what, no, but, 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 but why but why the emphasis but why the emphasis on, a, on his acquisition right so that's I've asked that question Okay, so I, that's why. Uh, so that's why. The, the, the kene is, is to do the reason. He created because of kone means he brings it from one rishus to another rishus, right. and that's where. Really okay, but here this is a lot of speculation, and I'm almost sure, as I said to you, I'm, I'm ready to rely on my memory okay. that the sources talk more nest than the choir, and I think they connect the two. That's what I think is. I think the simple interpretation is nest. Fine. The reason nest is like just like you have like sometimes you use the name Mokem and Hashem, you know, Mokem and Hashem or right. something like that. They usually use the word nest and Hashem when you're talking about Hashem protecting us as our protector, as our, you know, as our nest, as our hearth, as our home. Protector. Yeah. So, so I, all animals were created, the Gemma the Mishnah says, to serve humans. To serve us. So we're like their master, so to speak. And here we serve to protect, we, we are created to protect, to serve our I would say hearth, our nest in the sense of our protector. Our, it's like uh, the birds are b- dedicated to build a nest for their homes. So it's like that type of thing, shelter. Anyway, this needs to be looked in there. It's not really relevant to the discussion here. Here the emphasis actually is on a different word. Ratsasa. So here's the Ratsan. He wants to say that Eretz is connected to Ratsan. So Eretz, why is it? Eretz, so Ratsasa, Lassus, it's saying Kena, Ratsasa, meaning desire or running to or both. So we say, when you will enter the land, the Rebbe Rashab is explaining here, that it means, when you will enter into the Ratzon HaPoshet Shebenefesh, you will enter into the simple desire in the soul of the person. And that's why it says, on the land that God will give you, meaning on the Ratzon that God will give you. This Galas, HaRatzon, Poshet, Zeo, Shenes, Mumay. Because the revelation of this higher, this simple desire is a gift we get from above. As we learned, that's what Ak gives us. That Ratzon Poshet that every soul has. It's a gift from above. It's not through our efforts. We're born with it. It's innate. That's Nachla. So it says in the Poshet, it says, So it says, 
When we say Nachal is an inheritance. Mm-hmm. You said it was a, uh, huh? portion. a portion. But here he means inheritance, meaning inheritance. that you inherited by uh, Mitzad Tulda, Mitzad, uh, what's the word? Uh, you, you naturally inherit. You don't need effort. That's, and that's the level of Makifim Sheba Nefesh. Shukumashikosov, Nachla, Ovar Al Nafshenu. What's the proof of that? It means Ovar Al Nafshenu. It's like Makif. A stream like a nachal, yeah. yeah it's a nachal. So nachal over al nafshenu like a, a stream of water that passed over. Word. Right, right. Over al nafshenu passed over our soul. Like it says elsewhere. Basically, he's, yeah, he's establishing that it's above in a makifim. So within our soul, we're given as a gift. That's in the, God gives us a gift as a matana nachla, and nachla the makif the ruts and poshut. I thought the gift and nachla are two different No. No, the gift and nachla are the same thing here. Inheritance Yeah, for all practical purposes, they're both given from above. In other places, there's a distinction between the two, but both are not through your effort. One you inherit, and one is a gift. But here, here it said. The Rabbi spoke about many distinctions. But not here. I just told you. There's many, many. There's sometimes generally and specific. Why didn't he just use the word gift? He does. Nason. Nason is gift. Okay. However, in order to arrive, to reach this level of the simple desire, and poshut again, in English means simple, but simple here meaning actually more complex than complex. So simple here is like seamless, uh, beyond the distinctions. So just saying distinction, when you say poshut, you could say someone's poshut as in simple and doesn't have many la- layers. Here it's pushes that's higher than without all the layers. Any yeah. Right. Or seamless, or sometimes I use, but the word I use, I've used not seamless, uh, based, um, substanceless. So, no, however, in order to reach this level, <laughs> but in order to reach this, you first have to have the Aveda, the service, the worship, that's Apitam Vedas, the rational. And that's the meaning, when you will enter into this land. That's our effort, that we will enter into the land, into the Rats and Pasha that we're given as a gift. So we have to do something to acquire it. Yeah, that's the Avedi Sovei. Tehine Israts and Israts. Because now there's two Rats. This is a Lashem from Zayah. There's Israts and Israts, an expression. There's a will, there's a desire, and there's a desire. You know? There's a desire, and then there's another desire. Where there's a will, there's a way? No, 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 no. no. (laughs) Like you say, do you want to dance, or do you want to dance? Type of thing. So, Isratzen shal pitam vadas. There's a desire, that's a rational one, al pitam vadas. Rational. Meaning, it comes with, like he spoke earlier, if you remember... When he spoke about the Mesir Snefesh, the Mesir Snefesh is the Mael Matam Vadas. Or the like pre- previous Mimer, he spoke about Kabbalah Sale. There's Kabbalah Sale, there's uh, that. Even, though, even in this Mimer, he spoke about Kabbalah Sale, that it, for each mitzvah, that based on a person's rational calculations and so on. The Yisrach Shalom Mael Matam Vadas. And there's a second, there's another desire that's higher than rational, super rational. And the, and the regular process, process, process has to be the first begins, you begin with your rational, with your rational desire, which means it makes sense, you come through with logical conclusions, and through this you become a container to the, the Gilead Rotson, the revelation of the the super rational desire. V'zeh you're not tefillah shehi is bonus b'psukah de zimur b'chus kishma. The first step, that's tefillah davening, where you meditate, you contemplate b'psukah de zimur in the verses of song or b'chus kishma. B'psukah de zimur. What's b'psukah de zimur? Who inyan ha'ilulim v'ha tishbaches? Basically, it consists of the b'psukah de zimur consists of hilulim, our uh, praise, well, tishbaches. Hymns, hymns, and. Now, he, both uh, Hillel, Lahalel, Ulahid, Lahalel means to praise, and the Shabayach means to praise. It's two different, in, two different types of uh, of 
admiring, you can say, and uh, exalting and uh, and and um, praising. But the Hilum that the, the Briyas Visavas Elamis. It's talking about the praises that are around that the Briyas of the creation of the world and the, and the bringing into being of the worlds. So it's all within the structure of the worlds. You could say it's more like. Primius. Primius. I think it means it's exaltation. Okay. Well, Birch is Krishna. Then comes after Psukha de Zimra, right? Comes the next step. Is the Birch is Krishna. These are the things we say right before Shema. Avasalam, from the Malachim, Kaddish, 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 and all that. So he says, This is his bonus, but Bittl HaMalachim. This is the contemplation on the Bittl, on the sublimation of the angels. Or Be Krishna is next level. Bittl HaNashamis. Basagos and Belakus. That's really the bitl, the sublimation of the souls in their comprehension of godliness. O Kumesh Amish Yisrael. Yisrael now. We're talking now Yisrael. about the Amalachim. Because it was really supposed to be part of Kedushan. They were supposed to be part of Kedushan. Because of politics, they couldn't say it. So they put it in here. It seems it's out of, like, out of space. It's out of place. Because they, they have much more bitl and they go to a higher place. And, and, it, and it should be in its proper place. It doesn't fit in in this place. It fits very well in. Neshamas are higher than Malachim. They're higher, but the, the, the original place was even asked. You're asking questions from other places. This is an explanation in the order of progress of, of, of davening. Does it make sense? What, what doesn't make sense? You start with first talking the world. We're stuck in there because the Romans or whatever wouldn't let us, or the Greeks or whatever, whatever it is, we couldn't say, we well, should, couldn't say good so, But today we have no Greeks and Romans, so why don't we well, change the order? Kind of stays. I don't know, you know, but that, that no, because it, it doesn't begin with Romans and Greeks. It begins with and There's a deeper reason for the davening. It's a, there's a structure to it. Was it in there? At, 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 at there was once a. So what? Yeah, so what are you saying? But today it is in there. But today it's in there. What are you saying? So what? Who cares how it came? We wouldn't have. We wouldn't have. Uh, we wouldn't have Pesach if, if the Egyptians weren't such uh, oppressors. So it's the same thing. You say this. We also had this before. <laughs> same thing. Baruch so we totally didn't have it before. And, and, and Pesach, we did. Yes. Okay. If you can understand that distinction, well, God bless you. To me. Uh, we learned from Rashi that it was Pesach and we celebrating Pesach. Okay. Fine. Good. We actually never had that before we are Shema. So for you, the bigger problem is the order, Krishna. The order, that, the order, that's what so the order is very simple. It begins with the worlds. It moves to Bria, which is Malachim, and then it moves to Atzilus. The Shamas is going upward. That's the it says everywhere. Atzilus. It was a different formula to, to go through Listen, my, my, my suggestion would be: if you have this question, you should write it down and say how is it reconcile this thing Atzilus with the way it was established. Um, that's what I would suggest. I Hmm? No, I, I'd be happy to respond to it that way. It's, 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 it's asking a question for other places. It's fine. But basically, the, the structure goes this way. So it's climbing the ladder, as they say. The calls, uh, so three steps. Shukha de Zimra is the world, then comes to the Malachim, then comes to the Neshamas, Shema Yisro. The calls are our Veda Shalpitam Vedas. All this is the service that's rational. Then it comes from this to Shema Yisro, Amida. La bitl shalamayal metamidas to the super rational bitl. Ukidu shatfila nikrasulam shemutsavatsa as it's known that davening prayer is like a ladder that the ladder that Yaakov dreamed that shemutsavatsa its legs standing on the ground vereshe megir shemayma and its head goes into the skies. Haynu avedes al pitam vedas. That means it starts on the ground arzo. Here actually arzo is using al pitam vedas. But this is, uh, and and because uh, there before it said Adet is lots, just interesting. Reishi Magia Shemayma and its head, the top of the ladder reaches the heavens. Bchinis Hamakifim Sheben Nefesh, that's the Makifim, that's the lots not poshut. V'zel Masha Hashem Elokech Neisun Neisun. This is what God gives us, the higher level. Om Nom Inyan V'Yerashto Hu Yerusha Saoritz Mazayin Amomin. Now comes another step. So we talked about two steps here. One is that which is given from above, the Ratzin, Poshet, is a makiv that's given from Hashem al is given to us like a Nachla. 
But in order to, to, to access it, we need to enter into the land, which is our Veda Pitambadas. Yeah. And now he goes, the, the continuation of the verse goes, after Nachl goes, Virashto, Virashto, Bo. So what does that mean? She says, now Virashto, next step. Omnam, Virashto, who Yerusha Saritz Mazayna Mom. That's the, actually not even inheritance, it almost means like the conquering. Or inheriting it that from the seven nations that were there. That when the, the Jews went into Israel, they were the seven nations. Cana, the Canaan. Right. Yeah. So this is the Yerusha from these nations. What is this Avaida? Yeah. So Yerusha here does not mean inheritance from our Avesenu. Like he said before. Like, so this is the, what's an Avaida? The Avaida who bitter Hazayim midis the Nefesh This is the refinement of the seven emotions of the animal soul in the level of transforming darkness to light through this we inherit the energies of Teyu that are higher than Tikkun so he doesn't explain this right here but basically briefly just to give you the, the context of the whole picture you know, we, we, we are talking primarily all the discussions and all the chapters till here has not been at all about Klippas. He's not talked about evil. He's not talked about uh, even Toyo. So the picture of things, everything that's been discussed here is the way it's meant to be. So God rose in his desire in the alien self there should be existence. Then comes a Tzimtzum. Then a Kav. Then comes Ak. Then comes all the other levels, Atzilis and so on. But a few times you guys asked, you know, so what about Nefshal Kis, Nefshal Shabamis? Where, where does that fit in? Remember, after the Tzimtzum, because the Kavona, that God's purpose intention is that there should be a world that is conceals godliness. So everything discussed here is how God puts it in place. But how does this darkness, this, as a result of the Tzimtzum, there's a big misalignment starting to take place here. So if you're able to go into the way the plan is, yeah, Ak is exactly the way God envisioned the whole world. But so what happened then? So why are we so far away from that? So I'm just explaining it to you. No, he hasn't explained it here. This will be explained many, much later. But in context of things, how did, how, how did we get so far from, from the alignment? I mean, a, it's all so beautiful. That's the Sirius Hagnuzes, it's a Simpson, there's a Kav, there's Ak. You know, what happened? Why is this world so far away? So before he alluded, he said, we have the Pechira to defy God's will because it's all makif. Fine. But how does how, what happens here? So the Tzimtzum at the end of the day is going to come into big play here. It's, gonna, it's going to throw everything uh, um, awry. It's going to go all wild. The Tzimtzum conceals everything. So as a concealer. And the makif of Ak, meaning it's detached and not conscious, Suddenly, there's going to be a world of Toyo is going to appear. The world of Toyo, I like to always explain it like it's a market correction. Because once God's presence is concealed from the picture, so the energies in the containers are, you know, some way they've, they're, they're, going, they're going to lose their bearings. Lifni had symptom, there's no symptom. They're all aligned, they're all part of the divine picture, there's nowhere to go. It's all just part of the divine plan. Even in Ak, everything's part of the divine plan, but Ak is already in existence. There's already a Tzimtzum at work. There's a concealment. And this concealment is going to have its consequences. The first consequence is going to be that the energies in Toyo are going to be too intense for each other. The containers are not going to be powerful enough to contain them. The whole thing's going to explode. Now, you ask the question, is this part of the plan? Absolutely. The expression goes, he built in order to raise, R-A-Z-E. He built it in order to break it down, in order to breaking down in order to rebuild it. So Toyu has a very important role. And in itself, you cannot say, Chassidus says that Tzimtzum, though God desired the Tzimtzum, is an interesting expression that Chassidus brings. The Friedrich Rebbe brings this, and the Rebbe emphasizes it a lot. The Tzimtzum itself is Hei You hear this? The Tzimtzum itself is against God's will. But who, will, but who put the Tzimtzum there? There was no one else around. There's no force but God. Because, why does it mean it's Hei Because the Tzimtzum is Hei Its purpose is not. The Tzimtzum is Bishvi Lahayr. Because if the Tzimtzum itself was the purpose, imagine divine investment in Tzimtzum, we would never be able to break this Tzimtzum. How could we break a Tzimtzum that God wants? 
So the tzimtzum is only so-called a, a stepping stone in order to have revelation for the student. This teacher has to be silent in order for the student. Now again, Kol Yochel, God can do anything he wants, but he wants it to make it make sense. So the tzimtzum itself is not the purpose. It's what the tzimtzum brings that is the purpose. Therefore, even the concealment, the Rebbe has a beautiful sikh in Shmini, Chelik Yudzayin. He says, even the concealment itself, which elicits from us deeper mysterious nefesh, that itself becomes refined, but only because it elicits something. Not, it would be like saying, Golos itself is the purpose because that's where we have the deepest avayt, and no chaz v'shalom. The purpose is the revelation. But to get there, the concealment is a stepping stone. So toyu is actually a consequence of the tzimtzum. So it's only the energies and the containers, you can say they don't have free will, but they, they are somewhat listless after the tzimtzum, and they lose perspective. Is it, is it before the Kav Tohu? No, after. Everything is after the Kav. It's after the Kav, but before Ak or before after? After Ak, after Ak. Tohu is after Ak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it goes like this. The Kav, Ak, Akudim, Toyu, Tikkun. What was that last one? What's it start with? It starts with Asmus. <laughs> Always. Now, what you just get here is the Kav. Now, after the Tzimtzum goes the Kav. The Kav creates the first eagle is Ak, Adam Kadmin. You can call that Adam de Bria de Klolos. Then comes Adam Yitzira de Klolos. It's usually Akudim and Nekudim. Akudim is ten energies in one container. Nekudim is Toyu. Always know Nekudim is another name for Toyu. Nekudis. A whole bunch of spe- separate uh, points. That's where the Shvira Sakelim, this shattering of the containers happens. And then comes Virudim, or you could say Asiya de Klolos Atzilis. And then the rest of the worlds. Atzilus is the tikkun of the tayu. That's why it's called tikkun. It's the repair of the shattered vessels. What's his rudim? Atzilus. When we say akudim, nekudim, vrudim, is akudim, tayu, tikkun. Okay. This is also in that maimed, druzgim, miniodam. I'm only saying this to explain a bit here what is going on here. So, in the actual Maimorim, he's not really talking about Klippus, but the end of the Maimorim, he does because he's talking to Sukkim, so he's talking to... Remember, the Maimor itself he's discussing, he's building the structure. The Rebbe Rashab is giving us a picture of the structure. He hasn't yet gotten to Klippus. So right now, I'm just explaining it because since we're learning it all, it's important to know. He's assuming that we know this. So, Tayu is uh, the root of the Shara... Tayu is the root of the seven, called the seven kings. Right? That, that that ruled and died. Where are the seven kings? You look at the end of Pasha Vayishlach. Talk about the kings of Esau's, Esau's uh, dynasty, so to speak. So it says, Vayimlach Vayamos. All the names, the seven names. These are the seven kings of Tayu, or the seven Midas of Tayu. So Vayimlach means they ruled, they were powerful. Vayamos, and then they were, then they were shattered. That's the Shvira Sakelem. That's where Shvira Sakelem is alluded to. The, the Rafidic Rebbe even has a sikha that Yutas Kislev always is around that time. Because Yutas Kislev came to be Masak in the Shvira of the Melochim. Of the, that's what he says. All, 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 all seven, yeah. So yeah. all seven. I mean, the, the, by the last one, it doesn't say Vayomos, because Malchus doesn't really. Malchus, you know, it, 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 the Yukim in all the seven. But these are the seven kings that he's referring to are also the seven nations in Israel when the Jews came in. You know, Aknani, Aprizi, and so on. And Avaida here is refining. So basically, in context of things, Tayu creates a new, uh, what do we call it? A new, um, a lineage, right? A new, uh, a new line that we have to now deal with. And that is the darker part of the world. So now he's going and saying, what is Vayirashta? So we talked about, so now, let's look at a human being. So here we are. You and I are sitting here, and we have within us everything. You know, Elam Kotan is our Adam. We are a microcosm of all of existence. We established how we have Ak within us. You know, if we made us an X-ray in this game, an X-ray of the human soul, we have everything in us. We have Ak. What would be Ak? Ak would be our receptivity to life. Ak would be our Munapshuta, our simple faith. Ak would be the Bittl to the Balarots. But that's Makif. Okay? We have uh, Tahiri Law within us. That's the, the, the Bittl of the body. The, the, when we fast, when we're able to break our body, when we align the body, the akeda, you know, the body's dedication. 
And then we have to deal with the Nefesh Abamis. So now we're speaking here. So the Rotson itself, the Rotson Pasha, that would be, I would say, Ak, the simple faith. That's something that is given to us as a gift. We have to do our Vedal Pitam Vedas, that's the rational work that we do, which is more with the Kreich's premium. That I would say is Atzilus within us. Now we're speaking about what's your Rashta. Your Rashta is when we fight our animal soul. So really, we, it's here, this, I'm just spelling out the structure of all our Avedas within us. We have Ak, Tehiri, Law. We have um, Aved, the Kreich's premium, three things. And now the fourth thing is Virashta. So what's Virashta? That's when we, that's the conquering of the land. What's, what's the conquering of the land from the, from the kings, the kings, the Canaanite kings? The, that conquering says Virashta, that is the Yerusha that we inherit. The, remember, Tayu is very powerful energies. When Yaakov took the blessings from Esau, he basically inherited those great blessings of Tayu. The reason Yitzchok wanted to give it to him because he thought that Esau was ready, as Chizah says. He thought Tayu was already refined, like when Ubi Mashiach comes, but that was not correct. So meanwhile, now Yaakov takes the blessings and the birthright. And that's the Yerusha. So the same thing is when we enter the land, that's what it means. Avedu Bir is the is that's the refinement of the seven emotions within us, of our animal soul, which comes from the seven kings of Tehu. And what, is, what are we doing when we refine it? We transform darkness into light. We basically are inheriting these powerful energies that's higher than Tikkun. So Tikkun is the Aved Pitam Vedas. That's when we daven, let's say. Sukkot de Zimra, where Mizboinen, we, we meditate, contemplate on God, on the creation, or on the angels, or on Shema. He said that's all of Eid Alpi And that leads us to a place that's higher, Tambadas, Shema Nesrei, which is Ratzon Pashut, Amun But what about our animal side? So now that's Virashta. That's the transformation of these energies of Tayu. And for who Shemagim Eleda Makivai di Bitlova Chumnez Dafka. He's gonna, he, this is connecting to the body, to the bitl from Tahiri Allah. That means, what does this do when you do this? Through this you reach the Ermakiv that comes specifically through a uh, bitl, through eliminating, nullifying the Khumri is dafka, the coarseness and crassness of existence. So before we spoke about reaching a Makiv, the Makiv of Ratsan Pashat, Amunapshutta, that comes through Aveda Pitam Vedas. When you contemplate on God. But if you want to reach, the remember he spoke in the last chapter, two chapters back, the bitl of the kalim, the bitl of the goof is deeper than the bitl of the neshama. That is only when you fight the chumris of your body and your nefesh abad, your animal soul. And that gets us to what? Tohu? That gets us to toh and all the way up to tihiri law. He didn't say it yet, but that's what he said before. The shedash ha chumris huma kalim. Here we go. The root of Chumriyas, remember Chumriyas is not Kalim on their own R, it could be Holy Kalim. Chumriyas, on the other hand, is coarse, crass, the crassness of our lives. The, the shaders of Chumriyas is from containers, from energy you can never get to Chumriyas. You need Chumriyas, you need concealment. Containers conceal. So the root is from the containers. And through that one person affects on himself a, 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 a nullification of this crassness within him, anything that's crass in our personalities, nasa tikkun u bitla kelim lamayla. That causes a repair and a sublimation of the containers above. I mean, he's saying it so densely here, that's why I'm elaborating, but it's really an unbelievably beautiful way of uh, defining Aveda. In other words, again, he didn't say this before. Before he was just talking about Eris and Kalim, as they manifest, and the Aveda with the Eir, he said, was what? Bittl is is uh, Muna, faith, and your soul, your, your your soul's simple desire to connect to godliness. The bitl of the body, like the akeda, or uh, or mesiris nefesh with your body, as he said, you give yourself, you give your body, or a, a yom kippur, a fast day, etc., is of the body. We said one reaches higher than the other. Now he's applying it much more down here on earth. There it was more uh, more theoretical. On earth it means. That when you, there's two types of Aveda. One Aveda is when you're busy basically feeding your soul. So let's say you're singing on Shabbos and Nigan. You know, that Aveda is not per se focusing on the crassness of your body. That's focusing bringing Gili into your life. Or you're davening. I mean, obviously davening you can focus on the other as well. That's Aveda with Nefesh Alekis. Trying to bring my Nefesh Alekis, fan its flames, make it apparent, aware, let's sing, let's daven, let's talk, let's learn. 
stimulate your mind with Torah, whatever it may be. Then there's a whole other Aved, which is obviously a lot more painful and difficult. And that is focusing on some of our negative characteristics. You know, Birur Hamidus of Nefesh Abbas. You, have, you, know, you get angry. Uh, I'm just, you know, spelling it out. You get angry. <coughs> you're, you're, you're jealous. You um, are not giving, withholding. No, I'm going through Chesed, Gvur at the first. Everyone has its thing. Like we do Sri Sam, and that's what we're supposed to do. Now you do it's a completely different type of work. You can work with your Nefesh al Kis. Later in Ayin Beis, I remember learning beautifully how he says, Our person is completely, his Nefesh al Kis is beautiful, but he never touches his Nefesh Abamas. So you really have, he's like Jekyll and Hyde. Could have again either. Now you have Jekyll and Hyde, you have like a beautiful element, but then when the worst comes out, you see, you see it's, it's horrible. Because he's never dealt with that. So there's a whole other Aved that where you're simply focusing on really refining yourself, working on yourself. It begins with this kafia, you know, repressing. But the goal is obviously transforming, channeling. Like, you know, what it says in the Gemara, a person is born a certain time of the year, Madim, Mazl Maidim, certain time of the month, he has a Gvuradika personality. So he could become a murderer or he could become a Shaykhit or a Moil. Yes. <laughs> Shedding blood. The point is that every quality we have that you may even be have negative elements can be channeled, and so on. I'm just spelling it out. How is that here? Ch- no, no, no. Is, is still a spiritual badness. Right? No, 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 no. But, but okay. So, so, no, but no. Let's spell it out. Okay. Uh, Chumrius, like he says in the beginning of Tanya, there's Dal Yisraelis. It depends which one you're talking about. If you're talking about these, the Dal Yisraelis Rayim, right? So one is indulging in pleasures. So one part of uh, Chumris, one part of, of your Midas is, I, 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 you know, there are people who just like Elam Haza. And then they like the Chumris of Elam Haza. You know, how far you want to go, you use your imagination. You know, how, how Chumris, something is Chumris. But you mentioned anger, for example. That was, I'm just trying to say. I, I use anger because it's a Midas, you know, it's a Midas. That negativity rather than a Chumris? Yeah, but what, but what happens, you know, when so, somebody, you're driving, you're, driving, you're driving on the road and you have road rage. That you can categorize that as a chumris also. It's not just anger, you know, you're angry. And, you know, it, it expresses, you yell at somebody. I mean, it's a different type. I understand, you, you're defining chumris as being somebody who's sitting and fressing. Right. I understand. Sure. Good. But that's a different way chumris manifests. That's already a discussion on, we'll make an encyclopedia on chumris. That's something we don't even need I.M. Bayes for. We're pretty good masters. We, could <laughs> <laughs> we don't need I.M. Bayes, right? To teach us all the levels of chumris. Um <laughs> That we can make compare notes and decide, you know, what's the most chumris dicker things we've done in our life. <laughs> That's a whole other discussion. I understand. That's what I was going to say. Another aisle has opened up. Let's tell you, another aisle. You know, this aisle, that aisle. <laughs> well, listen. Don't get so uh, excited. I'm sure that some of us can some of us can match you in chumris. Okay, ruchni is another story. <laughs> Everyone thinks maybe there are various are the worst. Okay, fine. My point is, look, you'll get the idea. I mean, it, 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 I'm trying to apply this to, to ourselves. Whatever chumri, however it manifests. You know, we all have our chumri is the good thing. For some people, don't even have taivas that other people have ter- terrible taivas for. That's how it is. So the chumri is very relative. Yeah, yeah. So in, all this. so in Tanya, by the way, I think that's an underestimated piece in Tanya. That I, I would turn that into a major uh, workshop. Of Pasha spelling out those dal you say the Saraim, Hoyulus, Gaiva, the Tainuga Elam Haza. He spells out really all the vices, essentially, that we have to deal with. The Alta Rebbe says it just in two lines. But it's really, if you spell it out and break it down, it's, it's real. It's that, huh? It's all of life. Right, the re, and the challenges we have on a daily basis, all of us have. You know. So, but, no, I'm just saying here, so this is now, he's talking now. So, so besides entering the land and just benefiting from the promised land that God gave us, our Ratz and Pasha, the Munapshuta, is now via Rashta. It's not so simple. I'm not just giving you a land. You've got to go to war. You're going to war with the seven kings. That's what he's saying here. You got, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Till now, with learning Ayin Bey's Ak seems so simple. But uh, maybe that's the difference. In, in Ak, there's no wars. There's no wars. Ak, a war is also an image. It's also part of the image. The wars are fought outside of Ak. <laughs> he said, You got to go out of your. Okay, so now we got this. So we're going to war. <laughs> I see we've all come alive here. <laughs>
understood that. You know, just, just it's also a reminder that Rebbe Rashab is not just to live, it's taking us to a trip to, to Ak and beyond. And to the Allah, there's also another side to life. <laughs> but it's also very bikitsa. He's just saying it briefly. Anyway, so let's continue. So Sheir Shachum, so now he's playing like this. So the Kalim, Sheir Shachum is Ma Kalim. See, this is why these ends of the Maimarim are very powerful because he takes the whole idea and brings it to some type of application in the Pasuk or in our Veda. So the Sheir Shachum is from the Kalim. Okay? And what happens then? That reaches the higher Er Makif. That reaches the makif of Tirla. Actually, he's get, helping us understand that Aveda, the Birur. Maybe that's why it's so important to explain this. Because before he said it more, the Mesir Nefesh of the body. Here he's spelling it out. It's not just a fast day. He's talking about the war with your body. That is a completely different thing. Ak gives us power to have a munapshuta, Simple faith to accept God's will, desire, bittle, and so on. This is giving us the power and this allows us to reach that that place through the bitter of the so we want to get the lift at him to my friends you're gonna to have to wield your you're gonna to have to wield your weapons <laughs> why you thought the battle was over <laughs> okay no 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 I understand that but let me tell you my response to that but you want to know something hey 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 he did not say tonoi he said it has a... One second, one second, one second. No, but you'll appreciate this. I'll tell you what the thing is. But now the battle is to make that Rebbe's statement a reality in our lives. That's also a battle. Because our habits and routines are still mentality before the Rebbe said that. That's said, the thing. Said, so, uh, so that battle, in my opinion, may be even harder. Because mindsets and routines, even Mashiach is sitting right here, if you're not, you, you're not ready for it, you have to battle your own you know, habits and inertia is very powerful. And when the Rebbe said to open our eyes, I think opening the eyes, I find it to be maybe more difficult than the, the Birurim that uh, we had. Because then it was a battle. Okay, fight the battle. and So now there is a battle. The battle is with our, with our perception. Right. That's yeah, what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So there's still a battle, but of a different sort. It's actually a battle of, a, it's an imaginary battle. It's not a real enemy. It's your, you're, the, you're the enemy. Mm. Absolutely. That's exactly how I feel the Rebbe's meant statement. That's why I have no doubt. The Rebbe would say, the ghoul is here and everything. You have to open your eyes. What does he mean by opening your eyes? He means physically open your eyes. We sat with open eyes. The Rebbe wrote the Zalman Gerari. We just, they published it recently. That some people sleep at my friend if I bring with closed eyes, but most with open eyes. That's what he wrote. Interesting. <laughs> Which is more painful? The guy's at least sleeping. <laughs> at least getting rest. This guy's like making believe I'm, I'm here with you. For sure. I mean, what do you think a Rebbe is anyway? It's not, by me, this is not even a, I mean, it's a Chiddush what the Rebbe said in Tav Shinun, obviously in the scheme of things. But what would the Rebbe come in Tav Shin Yud even? He came to open our eyes, to bring us to a level where we're not. It's simple as that. Let's not kid ourselves. You know, we're, it's, it's to open up another world, another reality. The same thing with the Rebbe Rashab is doing. Mm-hmm. So, even if everything is finished, we still got, we, the problem is we live in our own perception, and that's that. And that's the biggest uh, the, the dilemma, frankly. What are we going to do with that? That's a problem. See, that the Rebbe said, I can't do for you. I can do everything for you. I can help you. I can make, 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 make I can't open your eyes for you. Because that would defeat the whole purpose. Something to cry about. Like the Rebbe once said, if you don't cry, at least cry while you're not crying. And if that doesn't work, cry why you're not crying, why you're not crying. That's all. The Rebbe said that. <laughs> the Rebbe said about sukkah. That we don't feel makif from the bina, so why does it bother us? We can sleep in a sukkah. The middle Rebbe felt it. So the Rebbe said, we have tsar because we don't feel it. And the Rebbe continued. And said, if you don't have tsar over that, you have tsar over the tsar that you don't feel it. And then the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said say it as many times as you need till you get some type of tsar. <laughs> he said about if I bring a sukkah, uh, second night of second day of sukkah, tough shalom. That's what he said. I always use it, you know, we're by Havdallah. And we make Havdallah, it says, what, what do we, why do we take some in? One of the reasons is to revive the spirit that's about to faint after Shabbos. So I always ask, you see anybody fainting after Shabbos? Very many people are very excited that Shabbos is over. <laughs> you know, they faint when Shabbos begins. You should take some in the beginning. Some Spartan do. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So my question is the other way around. Why, why do we take some? You ever see anybody fainting? Left the pizza shops. It's very exciting Saturday night party time, right? So the answer is I, my answer is the same from the Rebbe that we take some him because you should have fainted, and if you don't, you should be feeling that you should be fainting because you don't feel that Shabbos is leaving. We should be afraid of the week, you know. But we don't have that trepidation. So the psalmim is to remind you that you should be reminded. Yeah, that's my take on it. <laughs> Next time you take psalmim, you got to think of the mitzvahs. You can't do this, or, uh, uh, professor. You can't do this in, uh, by, by rote. You think bal tshuva means a one-time thing? Call yom of bal tshuva. Huh? Well. We have to commit here. We learn this stuff. Yes. You have to make, as they say, you have to make miserable people happy and happy people miserable. <laughs> so we have to wake people up and up, wake ourselves up. The best way to wake others, or yourself up, is by waking others up. You make them crazy with this stuff in Chassidus. And that's how you, you, you the only way, I, 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 I don't think it's just going to be an epiphany. I think you have to like almost say, you know, I cry why I don't cry. If enough, pe- enough people say that to each other, something's going to happen. That's what I think. That can be expected of us. To suddenly have a very good Allah and one day we'll wake up, I don't know about that for everybody, maybe some people. But we could at least cry while we're not crying, you know. We could at least cry that the Rebbe cried or something like that. So it's also a bearer of the Khumris. And that brings to Hiri Allah. Ah, there we go. So now he continues. If you do a Hefriz bin Yerushal Matana, it's known the difference between Yerusha inheritance and a gift. The matana yesh la hefsik. The Yerusha ain't la hefsik. Wow, this is going to be very powerful, I see here. Okay. Yerusha, matana yesh la hefsik. That's why Avram didn't want to have a gift from from the, from them for Maharasa Machpelah. Because he knew a gift could always be taken back. He wanted to purchase it. Well, I could have did with Yeah, but, but without that, we wouldn't have anything. <laughs> So he's saying, the matar. So matani yesh lehefsik. It's a chazal, halacha. A gift is not eternal necessarily. Yerusha ain't lehefsik. When you inherit something, well, here he means inherit. He means kibush also. Is right? Yerusha is in. Yeah, but no, no, but I don't know what he means what by matani yesh lehefsik. What's that mean? Because once you give him matani, what's it? No, 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 no. This is a chazal. This is not his own words. This is a gemara says. Yeah, what's it mean? No, no. There's a matani. There are, uh, there for sure, I, I don't remember the detail, there are for sure halachas where a matana, there's certain conditions, a matana could be uh, a matana on last lahachzer. Yerusha cannot be a matana last lahachzer. Yerusha you can't, right? Right, maybe that's what, I have to look in the Gemara exactly, but there's definitely, there, there's definitely, it's not the same take, for sure not. Anyway, we need to look it up, fine. We have our resident, uh, where will we look it up? In Same. Yeah. <laughs> Where exactly? Yeah. It's a Gemara. I think it's about Basra in a few places. It's a it's a Mamma Khazama. It's definitely in Hilchus Maton Mikhilchus Matonis, Hilchus Yerusha and the Rambam, right. Yerusha Vinachla, whatever. That. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's the, the, I remember I, I, I'm trying to remember exact halachic differences. There's definitely a manata. You can give a gift on condition to return it. You can't give a Yerusha. You can't say I'm gonna inherit it and it's a condition for me to take it back. Like right. That's a simple example. Anyway, th- but that's expression fine. Here we go. The love that comes from rational, it changes and moves on. You move away from after davening. Well, first you have to have an awakening for it to move away, so just remember that. <laughs> Some people say nothing leaves after davening because nothing entered. Um, <laughs> so it's not a, it's not a proof. Um, so therefore, automatically, since that's the, 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 the key, the door that leads you to super rational um, uh, uh, avoda, so that also leaves. So that means there's a hefsik. So that which you give given from above, even though God gives it to us as a gift, and it's in us, but in any conscious way, it will leave us. Like he speaks in Tanya, in Peri Good Bays, he talks about this. As well. So also, because the container 
as he said, the Hoye Kisove, you have to enter there to be able to receive that that uh, and Poshet. I have a question on this, but we'll soon get back to that. So when this love ceases, Nefsika stops, ceases to be, or naturally, the, 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 the super rational love will also cease to be. Ava Yerusha, however, Yerusha, Shuai De Bidir Hanefesh Abamis, Yerusha meaning that you, that you worked hard, that you, you conquered it, and you made it yours, which comes to the refinement of the animal soul, through transforming in the Hefsik. That cannot be ever, that does never cease. Never, that's an that's a eternal con- con- conquest. On a very basic level, let me explain. He may say this, but let me just say. Generally speaking, you know, the Rebbe brings this in. It's a very basic. You know, halacha. Shtar love irur. Someone challenges a contract. So you go to court. Either you uphold the contract or you, uh, or you, uh, inval- uh, or you absolve it, invalidate it. If it's upheld, so api halacha, you can't challenge it again. In court, it's also the same. You can go to appeal court. But at some point, the Supreme Court, you can't keep challenging. Because they only dove us off. So the challenge ends up bringing greater strength to something. Why? Because it, it withstood a challenge. If it was never challenged, you could always argue, hey, you know what, it's a nice contract, but maybe uh, there's some, something dubious about it. So nobody likes to be challenged. The same thing is said, for example, about the Beis HaMikdash. The first two Bata Mikdash were destroyed because they weren't really challenged. Like the Mashal from Levi Tzu The garments that the child is given, didn't appreciate it, it goes on and plays and it tears. Second base amigdash. And Hashem says, This time I'll show it to you. You earn it. I want to see you be challenged. And then when you get it, it'll be a bias nitzchi. So nitzchi always comes as a result of making sure. Like, like after, for example, the maral, right? And after we left Mitzrayim, we no longer can be slaves ever again, spiritually, physically, and so on. Because Mitzrayim toughened our metal, hardened us. We went through the fire. And once you go through the fire and you survived and thrived, you're no longer, the, you never can be challenged the same way. I mean, this is a concept, it's like, it's like the mile of truth over tzaddik. A tzaddik never tasted the, ne- the, the dark. So you never know if he, what's going to happen. A person who's been there and transformed it, basically, that's, that's the difference in Aveda. So Matana, yeah, you can be given a gift of wisdom or a gift of, of uh, you know, brought up in a very beautiful, but if you haven't been challenged, you can't say this is for sure yours. You own it forever and ever. Except for the Baini, who's constantly challenged. Yeah. But a Baini is a Veda. The Baini, a Baini worked with himself. He works on himself all the time. Baini is not an automatic thing. Yes. You're given a gift. Listen, the Matana that we're given, that we have a Ava Mesuteris, is, is all beautiful. But we're talking about whether you're going to be conscious of it is going to require. That's what I say. If you want it to be a permanent part of your consciousness, not a permanent part, uh, the, uh, inheritance of your soul. That you have by birth. You don't need to do anything for that. We're talking about the permanent presence of in your consciousness. That is the mile of Yerusha. That's why he's saying, he didn't say that the Ava, the, the Munad Pshuta that you have disappears, period. It's no longer conscious of it. Da- during davening, so what, from, what comes from Ak is in you and revealed. But for you to be processed, you know, so you have a Munad Pshuta. But when does it come out? Like he said, when it's challenged, when you have Mesir Nefesh and so on. You, when you daven, you bring it out. But it, 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 it leaves as soon as the rational concentration leaves. Whereas when you break the body and you transform the crassness into light, he says that is permanent. That's Yerusha. That's what he's saying here. Vihine, that's a sapcha. That means a sapcha. Because you, know, you didn't avoid the darkness, you transformed the darkness. So there's no more darkness. The darkness can't affect you anymore. The darkness, if you ignore the darkness, so you could say, you know what, I pushed you away. He could always pop its head again and say, listen. Like he says in Tanya, by in Perik Tess, he says, Perik, Irk Tana Zeha Guf. It's actually a beautiful, how he describes the example there. We have to conquer the city, the, the, the foreign city. So he speaks like, I think, nine steps of how you conquer a city. So you can conquer a city, you, you won. But there's still pockets of resistance. And they're shooting at you, etc., etc. So conquering, you can conquer and still have to contend with all kinds of challenges. So real conquering is Yishapcha. When the enemy becomes your friend. So it's no longer just they're, they're overwhelmed or they're marginalized or they're, they're, uh, they're uh, subdued. You want them to be part of like it says, 
The serpent will become Shamas Gadol. He'll become a servant. Not just he'll be killed. He'll become a servant. It's the Sapcha, basically. It means the secret in psychology, it's essentially a person who's addicted to something or has some type of had negative stuff. The greatest thing is not just to, that he avoids it, but to take the same energy and you channel it elsewhere. That's the, that's the best ultimate healing. Because then it's, it's not like he's depriving himself. He just channeled it elsewhere. It's funny. The, 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 the I saw a group, by the way. The mushroom of the seven. I, 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 they're all they're just killed. That's, that's his, his, half, his coffee. Yeah. First of all, it's not so simple. Uh, you, they may, the people there may have been killed, but the nations themselves, lost of love, you're going to have nations, then there's going to be Oz Epech, Kol Amim. Oz Epech will transform all the nations. They resisted because they, you kill them because they resisted. But here anyway, it's called the conquering of the land. Um, but but this talks about this Al Tatsuras Mayev that the Rebbe often brings from the Mitla Rebbe, the beer of the Sheva Midas, then the beer of the three Moichim, that is that Yachiv Hashem is Gulcha will inherit the, all the ten lands. So it talks about some of it is Iskafia, some is Ishapcha. Ultimately, Ishapcha is the key. Even even Esav, all the Meshim al Hatsiyan, the end of days, Yaakov says to the Esav, Usnal al Iti will ultimately come, Rashi says. Because and like the, the, the Navaja in the Aftar, there that we say that the end of the day will be the Hisabcha of Edem, not the destruction of Edem. Look, in some cases, when it comes to Klippas, some things you have to destroy in order to elevate, some things you have to transform. We talked about this about when the Rebbe Sikha about killing whether everybody has to die when Mashiach comes or not. It's all Sikha from the Rebbe that it's all about Hisabcha. Right, exactly. Charkib Bnei Sheish in Basha Anyway, so now, so he says, Vihine. Beis Madrigas El de Matan of Yerusha Shneim Hem Pchinus Makif. These two levels, they're both Makif. Because remember, we said the gift of the Ratzon Poshet of the right from Ak is also Makif. Om Nam Inyu V'Yeshafte Bo Sheyib Pchinus Primius. Now comes another level that you have to bring this into a Primius. V'Hainu Sha Makif Yeir Be Primius. That means that the Makif. See, this again is the common thread of all the ends of the Memorim. Is about how Makiv comes into Primus. Very interesting. Literally, every end of the Mimer, who explains the Psukim, he, bring, he brings together the Makiv and the Primus. It's all part of the same thing. That's for Yashafta. Remember, he said this in the, last, in, the, the, in the end of chapter 62 when he said the Kav goes all the way to the bottom. Remember that piece? She says that, that the be there the gili of the makif, mamochel. He says that the kav comes. What's the lesson there? Yahalu shmei b'mochel, the shmei b'chinas hakav, a mochel b'chinas eagle. Yeah. So bottom line, like you said there before. Okay, fine. What is this naveda? Well, baveda who in yinatera shachrat fila. And Avi, this is the learning of Teira that comes after Davani. The Teiru pchinus er pnimi, but Teira shachrat fil me er amaki be pnimis, because Teira is er pnimi. That's clear. Which is again a central theme of Ayin Beis, and the interface is Teira. The Teira is er pnimi. You learn it, you internalize it. But Teira shachrat fila, and the Teira that comes after Davani, the internalization is me er hamaki be pnimis, the transcendent. Permeates the internal, the imminent. And Tirei Law, perhaps also. Yeah. We'll soon see about that. Yeah, exactly. So, davening itself, as he said, is the three first stages of the ladder, is Avedal Pitam Vedas. Okay? Which I thought that is Pnimi somewhat, but it's, I guess it's a Pnimi from the Aveda. That is a Kali to the Ermakif of Bisham Nesre. Let's just get the Rots and Poshet, the Amun Pshuta, where you stand before Avde Kamamara. Okay, but that can pass after Davening, since Aveda passes Alpitam Vedas, also the Makif passes, meaning it's concealed, it's back to its concealed state. Whereas when you transform the body, which is really not Davening, that's Aveda Bira, right? So that reaches the Makif Tirilo, that's permanent. Okay, but both of them are Makif. Now you want to have the Primius. So, like, the, the, so the learning after the davening is meant to extend this makif that you reached in Shem Nesri that came through Avedah Abitam is meant to bring it into a premius. In a, in a, 
Yeah, the Hari Aveda Bibkinis Ahavis Hanal. Oh, here we go. Because the Aveda and the. Th- I'm, I'm wrong. He's, he is going to say Tfila. That's for half the Bechol of Afro Bechol Nashom. We'll see in a second. The Hari Aveda Bibkinis Ahavis Hanal. What's Hanal? Ahavis? Yeah. Vaveda, the beer of Zich and Afsham is Hari Kolze, but Tfila. There we go. Even the Bezich and Afshabamis. All this is in Davening. The Aved of the Ava, whether it's Ava Pitambadas, meaning a rational or super rational, and the Aved of refining and, and of, of, of refining and. and uh, uh, I never said he calls it, but Fila. He doesn't say exactly which level, but it means the purpose of Tfilah is because it says in Tiny that the purpose of Davening is to break the Nefshabam. How he calls it about Tfilah, that's all in Davening, in prayer. Actually, but Tfilah, Bechinus Makif. But, but, but in Tfilah, it's in a form of Makif. I guess even the Aved Apitam Vadas is also, for some extent. But Tera is above Bechinus Primi. And in Tera, it comes into an internal, internalized. Vizel Bechol Sashon, this is in general for throughout the year. Kumay Kem Bidarech Prat Be'el Vrosh Hashon Eviyam Kippur Vachag Asukas. Same thing, more specifically. Remember, this mimer is a mimer in El. Salve, it's already coming to the end of the year. Vayim Beis. So specifically, this is almost like we're almost there, 100 years later. So as we go enter El, and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Chag HaSukas, he mentions everything here. Dini Rosh Hashanah, so more specifically, the same thing is also in these holidays. Dini Rosh Hashanah, Kabol Sel, Malchus Shemayim. Rosh Hashanah is the acceptance of the yoke of heaven. This is the revelation of the essence of the soul. Like we learned earlier. Same is also above. That that time, a year, remember he spoke about it by the Ace Rotson. Uh, right? Did you say it here by the Beis Amigdash? I think so. Well, anyway, earlier. That's a gili atzmis. That that time of year, there's a special gili from the essential level. Hashem is Yeah, which is used sometimes in a very painful way. He bared God bared his right his roya uh, his right is all right is dafka the right his arm his holy arm. That's Giliatzmus during Rosh Hashanah. V'chein atshuvah the Rosh Hashanah, the same thing, the return and tshuva of Rosh Hashanah b'chinis tshuva law. It's the higher level of tshuva. You know the who inyan. Okay, the difference between the higher level of tshuva and the lower level of tshuva is basically the best example for this is or a good example is like when you want to bring new uh, furniture into your house, but it's a very dusty and dirty house. So it's not wise to bring in new furniture before you clean it up. So tshuva tata deals with cleaning up your act. Tshuva law is reconnecting to God. So that's why tshuva law you say is when you say everyone has to do tshuva. Tshuva law is for everybody. Tshuva tata depends on how much dirt you got to clean up. So tshuva law is always says win ruach toshav ruach ruach The spirit that returns to the God that gave you, gave it. Huh? Uh, it says in places that tshuva law is the power of isapcha, but here is not, let's see where he goes here. Tshuva law basically is not the fighting with the Nefesh Abamis, it's the connection of the soul back to its source. He's basically saying it's a higher gili, Atzmis. He's explaining the same thing he said with Tefillah, that Tefillah is first makif on all those levels, and then Vrishafta, Torah, Pnimius, he's explaining it now also in the, in the season. Shezeu biz galus Atzmis haneshama. That's what Tzun Ech is. That comes with the revelation of the essence of the soul. The preparation for this is El, the preparation is through Tshuva Tata. What's the Tshuva Tata? Shehi Ayitzim in Ara. Like I just said, that's going away from the evil. That you you leave, you, you, you... I don't know about that. He's not using those words, so I'm not going to use them either. It could be either. It doesn't say here which one it is. Shehi Ayitzim in Ara. This is like, uh, you see, leaving, regretting, uh, leaving behind... You're, the, the, the evil. When he feels sad, masmar miliros bitter, as he as he's embittered, on his distance from the godliness. So that's not tshuva law. Tshuva law is ruch You feel getting close. Here you're feeling 
how far you are. What we spoke before, where you file that, the crying. When he feels bitter over the distance, in the details of his thought, speech, and action. That's how Cheshbon HaNefesh is done. Through the sadness, that's how you leave it. If you don't feel sad about it, and you're complacent, so then you're there. The first way to leave it is to feel bad about it. That's what he's saying here. Harizeh, this is the preparation for the higher tshuva of getting getting closer to God. The lower tshuva is in the power of each individual to come to it through his own efforts. Just like the service through that he said earlier, serving God rationally. Is in your own, is through our effort. The individual's initiative can make kein shuvah tatoi gam kein bekei chatzme. The same thing towards shuvah is also bekei chatzme. That's the comparison. Now, Elul is that the kasher who made the kasher who memorized the chushbena when he's of those people that make a chushben. They are those accountable individuals. The prata and yonim shuloi in the details of his matters, of his of his occupations, endeavors, involvements. Umesmara benafshe meed alze. And he's very embittered in his soul about it. He says in Yiddish, hold on. That he truly does not feel good. As he becomes, he feels sick. He feels repulsed from all these things that are not for, directed toward God. Specifically, the things that are exact opposite, antithetical to godliness. The True bitterness is akiras arotzin. It uproots the desire for those things. When you really feel bad about something, it uproots the desire. You know, which is also psychologically that way. Like, I don't know if you know, in some therapies they try to use, where people get addicted to something, they, they try to show them the addiction, they associate it with things that repulse them. So at one point they look at it, they're repulsed by it. So the idea of being, when you feel God and see this is so far from God, that's one of the ways to uproot a, a taiva, is by seeing how far it is from that, and feeling bitter about it, painful about it. So that's the way it uproots it. So when a person does that, that's an L. He makes a strong resolution in his soul. That they no longer will behave, will behave like this. And he will not return to this foolishness. The, t- the pro- auspicious time for this is the month of El, the days of El. Especially in the days of Slichus. The Ostorich Lefashfris Bemaisiv, because that's when you have to, Mefashfris, you have to examine. Even more than examine, right? Lefashfris is like. Yeah, uh, what's the word? Excavate. To excavate and, and dig into your mice and your actions, and to feel embittered by them, over them, and to create and to and to make a strong resolution, on the future. Through this we leave the ra, the evil, the wicked. And through this you become a container for the higher tshuva of Rosh Hashanah. That's already through the revelation of the essence that comes from above. He said before. Because through this comes the revelation of the essence of the soul. Now he moves on. And then the Yom Kippur then radiate and emanate even higher, very great giluim uh, nail, very great revelations. Shazai the inuim the yom kippur. Here we go. This is through the inuim of yom kippur, the the inflictions of yom kippur. Be miut v'cholav adam that he spoke before the tainus. Be miut hachelav. Keep saying cholav. Hachelav adam by the diminishing of the fat and the blood through fasting. Shai dezem meir b'chinas hamakiv the tiri law. Through this now we get the makiv of tiri law. K'mesh kosev. Kibonon era, as it says, because I saw you, in, I, I will see you in the cloud. Era I will see atzmusei. 
So in other words, now Yom Kippur we're getting the Onan, because Onan is uh, connected to Onan. He says Onan like this. Why the Onan Dafke? This is through the, the cloud specifically. This is Dafke Onan. Who Dafke? Who I the Onan Dafke? Onan Akteres Shu in Obedir Hara. That's the Onan Akteres. That's the cloud of the, the in, when the incense, the Akteres was brought. It created like a cloud. That cloud is a makif, but it's a makif that we're just to hidden bitter hara, the nefesh abamis, through the refinement of the ra within the animal soul, right? As he said, that's the bitter of the body of Yom Kippur, beginning is sabcha. This is a sabcha. As it says elsewhere. Okay, so we have here so far, Elul is like the Aveda Pitam Vedas, that's the work, Chuvetata, regret, bitterness, uprooting. That leads us to Chuvei Law, which is the Aved of Ak. That's like Ak. The Makif. Gilead Etzin that comes Rosh Hashanah. That leads us to Yom Kippur, even higher things that come through the breaking of the body, the infliction. That brings us to Tehiri Law, the Makif, that's his Habcha. Okay. But this is still all Makif. The Kolzeh Abchin is Makif. All this is still Makif. So even though he said before that transformation of the Nefesh Abamis, one second, he said before transformation of the Nefesh Abamis is, is Emla Hefsik, but it's not Primis. Okay, that's the point. So my question is if he said before transformation of the Nefesh Abamis, Emla Hefsik, even before Vyashafta, that's Yerusha, that means even after Davening, Emla Hefsik. So what? So I'm just, I'm just asking. Here, is, here it appears that. So, okay, let's continue. And then comes Sukkis, the, the Makif radiates and emanates within internally. That's what it means, Besukkis, Teshvu. You'll sit in Sukkis. What's sitting? Teshvu, Yishafta. That it should come down in a, how do we define this Yashvu? A containable, a settling, internalized, integrated way internally. And this is the meaning when we say means when it's concealed for the day of our holiday. So it usually refers to the Levona. That's that which is concealed in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is revealed in Sukkot Chagenu. Because the Iker Gili, the primary revelation of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is B'Sukkot. Which means, because that's when it radiates and emanates in an internal way. And this is the meaning when you will come into the land. Eretz is the simple desire. That's Nisina. That's a gift from above. But nevertheless, you need to have, however, yet you need to have the entry into the land. That's the way that we work with our rational faculty. That's with our own effort, and that's the container for the Rats and Pashat. As he said, that's the Ak. And this is what it says in Sifri, Asay Mitzvah, Do a Mitzvah, for its reward you'll enter the land. So he asked the question, all Mitzvahs are for that purpose. What is this Mitzvah? He means, specifically, this Aved of prayer. In, in contemplating the godliness, this comes with his own effort and 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 and, and, uh, yigia, and exertion. To bring himself to a love that's a rational love. By through this God will give you the the, the intense a love, the higher love. That's super rational. So that's the mitzvah he's talking about. That avoid the in addition to that, there'll be Yerusha Saritz. There'll be Yerusha Saritz. Through the refinement of the animal soul. Through this we have also the Makif, the higher Makif, of the higher shining, the higher purity, which is before the Tzimtzum. Through the exertion in Teireh, after davening, so I have my question that I'm asking is apparently before he said Yerusha, even without Vyashafta, is also Engla What was that? He said before that we understand the part where a person meditates. It's 
No, no, that, that's the vote. It's not primius. So basically, you have something that has a hefsik, you have something that doesn't have a hefsik, but it's not primius, and then you have the primius. That's what pastures the vote, yeah. Basically, in other words, you're saying like this. There's the, the work we do, our rational work, which is like davening, the beginning of davening, which leads us to a gift that we get from above, super rational. Rotsen, in, in, in the season, that's tefillah, that's the three steps in tefillah, and then Shem in the year, it's Elul, leading to Rosh Hashanah. Then comes the beer of the Nefesh Abamis, transforming the body. That creates transformation, and therefore it does not have a hefzik. That's permanent. That reaches Tiri Allah. In the Aveda, it's Yom Kippur. Okay? But that's all not a primius. It's not internalized. Because, right, Tiri Allah, at the end of the day, even the, the breaking of the body is not like internalized. It means you reached a very high level by fasting. So then comes the level of internalizing it. One second. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. That's that's, that's, that's yeah. That's a good explanation, right? So now the premium, so it all comes in premium, that's it, sukkahs. That's why some chustara, by the way, elsewhere it says, you take the makifim, the circling, and teira. Right, no, 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 because... It's not when it's already internalized. No, 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 it says because uh, cause after sukkahs we internalize, you come to higher makifim. And then that's also internalized afterwards. To what? The rest of the year. Oh, yes. Not at some point. The biggest test is Kitzer. The. Oh, you're out of this. <laughs> okay. Kitzer. I, I thought I'd go to the next chapter, but I don't think we'll have time for that. This is a long chapter. Let me just. Uh, oh, yeah, let me do the Kitzer, and then we'll ask questions. The Kitzer, the summary. Vehini ba makifim kolim anal. Now, those higher makifim is spoke tiri law, tiri tatar, harikola spheres were elems and pchinis is kalos lagamri. All the spheres, all the worlds are there completely encompassed. Heim be built in metzies be muhusun madregosun. He goes the opposite. Number one, in their lack of substance, in their muhusun madregosun, and their identity and their level. The heim be agilish shova be kulam. And both, and also the revelation that, that everything is equal there. Uh, interesting. Also, their levels and the revelation. Yeah, that, that's what I said. I think earlier. Yeah, yeah. Those are two. What he said, right? That's why there has to be a desire to create, to bring into being every world. Example, like the general desire for something, and rotsun prati, the specific desire. According to that, he explained the pasuk not just apianal with makifim klolim and protim, because that really is not so much here. It's really apianal, all the discussions and chapters before. Okay, so we did we did conclude a chapter Mimer um, sixteen, completes enough chapter sixty three, and uh, and we will resume the next Mimer seventeen chapter sixty four next.